Jay here. In tonight's episode in our home brewing series, we'll be covering. Hey YouTube, welcome to uh, part two of our series on home brewing. Today we're going to cover the basic necessities you need to get yourself home brewing. Um, you can see on my kitchen table I got a pile of stuff laid out. We're going to go through it all uh, real quick, easy. Nothing's that complicated. Um, I don't know how closely you're following along. This is what you're going to need. Next week we're going to brew. Um, it'll be an extract kit using pretty much what's on the, the uh, table there. Um, just going to go through it. So come on with me. We'll go take a look at it and uh, show you what you need to get started. Okay, so here it is real quick. Um, kind of the basics you're going to need to get home brewing. Uh, most of this you can find in a kit um, or you buy it individually. You could even come up with some of this stuff on your own. Uh, the first thing you're going to need is a, is a pot. Um, this one here is 16 quarts. I wouldn't go any smaller than 12 quarts, um, but 16 is a pretty good size, uh, pretty easy to come by, not too, too terribly expensive. Um, you can use anything but aluminum. Aluminum, because uh, wort's acidic, uh, you can pick up some metal flavors that you don't want. Uh, stainless is the best, but um, you can use a ceramic or whatever you got as long as it's non reactive. Um, you're also going to need a big spoon. Uh, you don't want to get your hands in that boiling stuff and it will need stirred from time to time. Um, if you're going to use a plastic one like this, um, make sure it's a high heat tolerant spoon. Um, you don't want it melting. Um, uh, you're going to need a good thermometer. Any meat thermometer that's well calibrated will do just fine. You could use digital, whatever you want. Um, this is kind of an add-on. It's called Irish Moss. Um, not absolutely necessary for brewing but I recommend it. Um, it, it. What it is is it's a seaweed and uh, it picks up some of the haze causing proteins in the beer. Uh, you put it in the last 15 minutes of your boil and that'll uh, absorb up some of the uh, haze causing proteins so you don't get a chill haze to it. Um, real good idea. Um, it's cheap. It's $1.50 for a bottle like that. It'll last you for several, several brew sessions. Okay, moving on you need a bucket uh, to ferment in. This is where your word will go. Um, really nice if you can find one that's graduated on the side so that uh, you can see um, how much beer you have there. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we uh, that's a 16 quart pot which isn't the five gallons but uh, if you're doing an extract batch um, you really only need to boil two or three gallons of water and then you can just add the other water which will actually help you cool down your your wort too to get it to uh, pitching temperature as quickly as you can. Um, if you look on the top here, there's a, a hole. This is where your airlock goes, which will allow uh, your beer, the carbon dioxide that's produced by the yeast, to escape without letting anything in the beer that you don't want in the beer. Um, this is an airlock here. This is what you call a three piece airlock. It's got uh, this part here, which goes into your hole and then you'd fill it up to about here with water and you put your little cap on there which um, allows the air to escape as the carbon dioxide rises up it pushes that cap up to a point above your water line and lets the gas flow out um, and then draws back down so nothing can get in it and then it's got just a little cap on the top there to protect so that little cap doesn't pop out um, if you were going to ferment in glass or use a secondary ferment you're going to need a bung stop uh, which also has a hole in the center for your airlock. Um, they're reasonable too. But uh, since we're talking about fermenting now, let's get to the important part. Sanitation is the key to good brewing. Um, you don't want anything living in your beer that you didn't want in there. So you want to keep your yeast and only your yeast in there. Several kinds of sanitizers. Um, these two here, uh, Five Star, Sand Star, uh, and Easy Clean. Are, uh, or one step are all oxygen based sanitizers they work really good they're no rinse as long as you don't mix them too strong um, same thing with Idafor which is an iodine based solution um, I've kind of switched over to it I think it's a little easier to work with it dissolves really well um, but it's an iodine based solution it's also no rinse as long as you don't make it too strong um, another thing you're going to need is a hydrometer this is a tool that shows you your specific gravity of your wort, which is the amount of sugars available. It's graduated and that allows you to see your strength. This one's also really nice, I don't know if you can see it real well, but it's got a percentage alcohol calculator on it and all kind of neat little things built in. You'll definitely need one of those. 
Um, in the background here, there is a glass carboy. This one's five gallons. Um, you use it for secondary fermentation. Um, basically to help your beer drop all the yeast out of it and clear it up and age. Um, it's, it's not a necessary step, but I always secondary ferment. Um, I think it gives you a better beer, uh, definitely a clearer beer. Now in order to get it in there, you're going to need a racking cane. And that's this. Basically you start a siphon with this with your tube on the end here and you just rack it over from one to the other. Um, and that's uh, how you rack it. That one's made out of stainless. Um, most of them are made out of plastic. Uh, I've gone through several plastic ones. I have a really nasty habit of breaking them, trying to get the tube off the end. So I finally just bothered to fork out the money and, and buy a stainless one. The stainless one will run about $20. Plastic ones are about 3 or 6 somewhere in that neck of the woods. They're pretty cheap, but uh, I get tired of breaking them. Um, this is a bottling wand. If you're going to bottle your beer, you're going to need one of these. Something I don't have here on a table because I don't have one anymore is a bottling bucket. Um, and it's going to look just like the fermentator bucket except for down here low. It's going to have a valve with a hose barb um, so that you can get the beer out of it. Now that being said, a couple other optional things you may want to invest in is a thief. If you're going to secondary ferment or ferment in all glass, if you decide a bu the plastic bucket isn't the way to go, you're going to want to use a six and a half gallon carboy. You're going to need a way to check the beer's specific gravity with your hydrometer. Uh, this thief is a kind of all-in-one unit. You just dip it down in there, the hydrometer fits right down in the big end, and uh, you can read your specific gravity really well. Um, another thing you may want to invest in is a grain bag. Um, most of the kits come with a muslin one, which I find little, leaves little pieces of mint. This is, or lint in the beer. This one is made out of nylon, so it, it's pretty um, lint-free. Also, uh, you can use it for dry hopping. Um, it's got all kind of really good uses for it uh, when it comes to brewing. You can steep grains in it. You can, you can put your hops in there and use it as a hop bag so you don't have to worry about the hops clogging uh, anything up on their way out. Um, but that's, that's something you do. And everything else, the last piece I have here that you're going to need is, is a capper. This is used for putting the caps on your bottles. Um, if you're not using you know, like easy cap bottles or something like that, uh, if you're just going to use your... Uh, reuse your craft beer bottles, anything that uses a compression cap, this is the tool you'll need to compression cap. So anyway, that's our wrap up of equipment that you're going to need to brew. Um, next week, like I said, we'll brew a batch and uh, you'll see most of this equipment in use.